Welcome to another video. We have a differential equation from the G advanced examination from 2022. This problem is quite easy. It's just that the options provided could be a little confusing if you don't have a good grasp of the entire concepts that are mentioned in the options. So we have a differential equation which was supposed to solve for and after finding that function which means you have to be accurate you have to tell whether the function is one of these four things it is either an increasing function or a decreasing function or a periodic function or it is a function such that there exists another function which is a constant function that cuts through the function infinitely many times. So solving the differential equation may not be the main problem. It is you being able to conclude which of those facts is or are correct. That's what makes these exams a bit more difficult or more challenging. But we're going to walk through it and then at the end of it you're going to see why the answer that they chose is the correct answer. Let's get into the video. So our first task is to solve this differential equation and it's also an initial value problem. So whenever you see a differential equation of this form, just as you are expected to know how to recognize or identify a quadratic equation, you have to know the standard form of a linear um, differential equation. This, okay, so at least you want to know what a linear differential equation, a first order linear differential equation. I should be more specific in this case. Okay, so because this looks like this, whenever a differential equation looks like dy dx plus p multiplied by y equals some q as a function of x, this is the standard form of a first order linear differential equation and whenever you see this you want to quickly think of your integrating factor okay you might think of other ways of solving it but the recommended way is just think of the integrating factor which is so use integrating factor and your integrating factor is written as mu which is a function of x. What does mu say? It says that your mu is equal to e to the integral of p, different integrated with respect to x. That's just it. So once we're able to do this, we get our integrating factor and we're good. So go back to what we said. We said this looks exactly like this. What do you think p is in this case? p is your 12. That's it. So we're going to say, in this case, this implies that mu as a function of x is e to the integral of 12 integrated with respect to x. What does this give us? If you integrate this, it's e to the 12x. And that's it. The most, and forget about plus c at this point, we're not doing plus c, okay. Now, the most important thing about the integrating factor is as soon as you get it, for this type of equation, I'm not going to go into it, I've made other videos explaining why it works like that. Just take this number, I mean this function, and use it to multiply y. e to the 12x times y will be equal to, go to the right hand side of the equation that you're dealing with and write what is on the right hand side. It is this, multiply it by this and integrate. So it's going to be e to the 12x times cosine of pi over 12x dx. So the work you need to do is always on this side. On this side, you don't need to do any work because this is the function you're looking for. By the time you're done on this side, you're going to come here and divide by e to the 12x. That's it. So the integrating factor is sweet. Okay. Now, 
So our main task is to integrate this. And because I don't want to take up a lot of space, I'm going to use the DI method. I'm going to use the table method to integrate this. We're going to do integration by parts. So what we have, we're going to differentiate and we're going to integrate. What we're going to differentiate is the trig function, which is cosine pi over 12x. So cosine pi over 12x. And we're going to integrate e to the 12x. Remember, you have to do plus, minus, plus, minus. You alternate like that. So let's begin. If I differentiate cosine, what do I get? I get negative sine multiplied by the derivative of the argument, which is pi over 12. So I'm going to get here pi negative pi over 12. For now, you can ignore these signs, okay? Negative pi over 12 sine of pi over 12x. That's what we have. Here, when I integrate e to the 12x, it's still e to the 12x, but I have to divide by the derivative of this argument here. So it's going to be 1 over 12 e to the 12x. Okay. Now, I'm not done because what I started with here is different. But usually when you do cosine and sine, you wait until it comes back to the original or this becomes zero. But we haven't seen that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this one more time and integrate this one more time. If I differentiate sine, I get cosine, which looks like the original. So if I differentiate this, again, it's going to be negative. What is it? Negative pi over now, it's going to be pi squared now over 12 squared because this is going to come back here again. Then I have cosine of pi over 12x here. And what do I have here? I'm going to have the same thing, 1 over 12 squared e to the 12x. Okay, so I'm done with my table because at this point, I know that I have generated the, see this? is a multiple of this. And once that happens, you just stop, okay? Because it looks like we're starting all over again. Now, I'm gonna go this way and pull up and pull this up. So, what we're integrating, this integral here is, let's call it i, I'm gonna call this i. Uh, so I don't have to write all of it. So I know that i, is equal to, I'm going to multiply this way, that's how you do this, multiply this by this, it's going to be 1 over 12, 1 over 12, e to the 12x times cosine pi over 12x. That's the first part. The second part is this one, but this is going to be minus times minus gives me plus. So I'm going to write plus. Now, this pi over 12 will multiply this 1 over 12 squared, so it's going to be plus pi over 12 cubed. I'm just going to leave it that way, plus pi over 12 cubed. And I'm going to be multiplying e to the 12x. And then the final one would be this. See, every time you multiply this way, you have to put the integral sign, okay? So, and when you put the integral sign, that is i. Remember, I had the integral sign. So here, if I multiply this, so ignore the constants for now. If I multiply this by this, it's going to give me e to the 12x times cosine pi over 12x, which is exactly what we're trying to integrate. So that is I times this scalar. Now we're going to go plus times minus is minus. So we're going to have minus, and then we're going to have this multiplying this will be pi squared over 12 to the fourth. So this is going to be pi squared over 12 to the fourth times i. We now need to move this over here so that we have i plus that is going to give us 1 plus pi squared over 12 to the fourth i. Uh, 
I'm going to leave all the 12s with their parents, okay? And just take the e to the 12 out, okay? So I'm going to have e to the 12x times what I have here is going to be 1 over 12 cosine pi over 12. So um, if we isolate i, which will be our integral, we now see that i will be equal to, I'm going to divide both sides by, you know what? I'm just going to resolve this. This is going to be 12 to the 4th plus pi squared over 12 to the 4th. But when I take 12 to the 4th up there, it's going to become, yeah, I'm just going to leave it because I don't care. Okay? I don't care. Okay. It's just going to be, so this is going to be 12 to the 4th over 1, 12 to the 4th plus pi squared. Then you have Oh, I can as well just put the e to the 12x here. And then I have this times 1 over 12 cosine. I think on this test, they just intentionally give you weird numbers. So it makes you stress because I don't think we should be doing pi over 12. It's just stressful. But again, it's part of the strain. Of education. So we're done with the integration and I'm assuming I didn't make a mistake. This should be correct. Okay. But it's an initial value problem because they gave us what y is going to be when this is this. Remember that what we have is this integral. We have not found what y is. In order to get y, we have to divide i by e to the 12 to the x. So that means when we take this, we're going to bring it up here and we're going to divide everything here by 12 to the x. So when you come here and you divide by 12 to the x, it's going to take this out. It's gone. But when you get to this c, you will have to be dividing c by 12 to the x, by e to the 12x rather, not 12 to the x, e to the 12x. Okay, so that means from here, we have e to the 12x y is equal to i means that y is equal to, when you divide this, let's write it, which implies that y equals i. Let's write this i e to the negative 12 to the x. So if you multiply this by e to the negative 12 to the x, I said it's going to take this out. So this is the y we need to answer the questions on. So we have to say that this is 12 to the fourth. This will take this out over 12 to the fourth plus pi squared. Remember, we're not trying to find y. The question is just to talk about the characteristics of y. So don't spend your time trying to simplify. Just look at the picture. Okay, that's why I'm not taking this in to destroy these ones. So what we have would be here. We have 1 over 12 um, plus c. Okay. Now. Before I go on, I just want to tell you why it is necessary to do the next step. Look at what you have here and go back to the options and start asking yourself, is this a periodic function? Because if that question wasn't there, you may not really bother yourself with what C is. Because if C is zero, then this clearly from here to here, from here to here is a periodic function. Because we know the period of this, we know the period of this, okay? It's not like we don't know. We know the period, we know the period. And when you have two periodic functions, that we know the periods that they are not irrational periods, that we know that this is going to be periodic. But you're adding a function that is not periodic to a periodic function. It is no longer periodic. That's the problem. Unless we can calculate C and find out that it's zero, then it becomes periodic. So as we see now, it is not periodic unless C is zero. Okay. Now, 
If a function is periodic, it is neither increasing nor decreasing. Remember, a sine graph will go up and come down, so it does not have a constant slope. So because it has cosine or sine, all sinusoidal graphs are not like that. Now, if it is a tangent graph, then you might say, okay, if it is just one portion, okay? But in this, great, in this case, cosine or sine over, there's no restriction, definitely. It is neither increasing nor decreasing. So you see that there's so many reasons why you need to go back here and see what C does, but at least the increasing and decreasing options are not part of our answer. What is C? Let's go back. When x equals zero, y equals zero. So let's just plug in zero and see if we're gonna get this to be zero, because that's all you need. You don't even need to get the value of, the, of C. You just wanna know if it's gonna make this disappear. If it doesn't disappear, then this is not a periodic function. Okay, so let's go. Plug in zero for here. This becomes cosine zero. That makes it one. So this is one over 12 plus plug in everything here in the sine region becomes zero. So this is just one over 12. So one over 12 times this is just going to make this become to the fourth plus pi squared. So plugging in x into this part, we got our 12, we used it to reduce this. Now if we plug in zero into this part for x, this is gonna become one, so we just have c. So that means our c is the negative of this number. Okay, therefore we have confirmed that this function cannot be periodic because we are adding a non-periodic portion because c is not zero, this doesn't disappear, and that's it. So because it's a multiple choice problem, uh, that's it. We've solved the entire problem. We just need to rewrite this y so that the only part we're going to change is this c is just going to be this number. This becomes minus 12 cubed e to the, can I manage to write that? It means I have to erase this. Actually, I want to write it. Okay, so this is our y. And we know this function is not increasing because of this part, and it is not decreasing because of this part, and it is not periodic because of this part. So the only thing we know is that there's going to be a line that runs through the whole sine, cosine, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to prove it. Just know that the other ones are incorrect, and because it's multiple choice, and there must be a correct answer according to the G advanced exam rules, there's always at least one answer correct. That's the correct answer and it makes sense. And that number is gonna be close to zero. I'm gonna graph it and see what it looks like. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.